everyone today we are going to discuss about the one of the oscillator so last class we have given the introduction to the oscillator and we have discussed the lc oscillator that is under lc we have lc tuned oscillator we have got colpitts and uh, hartley oscillator that we have discussed in the last class today we are going to uh, discuss about the one more oscillator that is a crystal oscillator so this crystal it is an oscillator which is going to make use of a uh, crystal okay. so the crystals are either in naturally occurring or synthetically manufactured exhibiting the piezoelectric effect okay so a crystal oscillator is basically it is a tuned circuit oscillator using a piezoelectric crystal as a resonant tank circuit similar to the previous oscillators that is lc tuned oscillator there we were making use of for lc component in the tank circuit here instead of lc we will be having a uh, piezoelectric crystal as resonant tank circuit so the crystal which are uh, many types of crystals are available usually quartz is the most commonly used crystal which has a greater stability in holding constant at Uh, whatever frequency the crystal is originally uh, cut cut to operate so the piezoelectric effect as i told uh, the crystals um, it which exhibits the piezoelectric effect the, so this piezoelectric effect means under the influence of the mechanical pressure the voltage gets generated across the opposite faces of the crystal so so this is the piezoelectric crystal this is a circuit symbol so this is the structure actually so uh, the piezoelectric effect means under the influence of the mechanical pressure the voltage gets generated across the opposite faces of the crystal if the mechanical force is applied in such a way to force the crystal to vibrate the ac voltage the ac voltage gets generated across it so uh, conversely the crystal is subjected to ac voltage it vibrates causing a uh, mechanical distortion in the crystal sheet so every crystal has its own um, resonating frequency depending on its cut so under the influence of the mechanical vibrations the crystal which is going to generate an electrical signal of constant frequency so this will be uh, designed for the constant frequency only one particular frequency we are going to obtain so if it is designed for uh, 3 megahertz we, we will be getting the output uh, uh, waveform frequency as 3 mega the crystal has a greater flex uh, stability in holding a constant frequency so crystal oscillator is basically a tuned circuit oscillator using the piezoelectric crystal as its resonant tank circuit so crystal oscillators are preferred when greater uh, frequency stability is re required and hence the crystals are used in the watches communication transmitters and the receivers etc so the main substances exhibiting the piezoelectric effect are as i told many crystals are available like uh, quartz rochelle salt and uh, tourmaline so rochelle salts Uh, this is also a crystal which have the greatest piezoelectric uh, activity so for a given ac voltage they vibrate more than quartz or tourmaline hence these are preferred in making the microphones associated with the portable tape recorders and headsets loud speakers etc so uh, then what about rochelle salt it is also it is mechanically the weakest of the three and break a uh, very easily so tourmaline uh, shows least piezoelectric effect but mechanically it is the strongest one uh, the tourmaline is the most expensive one also and hence its use is rare in practical uh, rare in practice so quartz is a compromise between uh, these two there is rochelle salt and the tourmaline uh, because of its uh, Uh, greatest uh, piezoelectric uh, activity okay so quartz is inexpensive and it is easily available in nature and hence commonly used in the crystal oscillator so it is widely used in the rf oscillators and in the filters also so when i come to the construction details of this quartz crystal is a hexagonal prism 
but for, for its practical use, it is cut to a, re a rectangular slab. As you can see here in the figure, it is cut into a rectangular piece or a slab. This slab is then mounted between the two metal plates. So these two are the two metal plates. So the symbolic representation you can see here, the metal plates are called holding plates as they hold the crystal slab in between them. So these two are the, uh, this is a crystal slab and these two are the metal plates which is going to hold the rectangular slab. Okay. Next, this uh, second figure which shows us the uh, AC equivalent circuit of this crystal. So, when the crystal is not vibrating, it is equivalent to a capacitance due to mechanical mounting of the crystal. Such a capacitance existing uh, due to the two metal plates separated by a dielectric like crystal slab. So, it is called the mounting capacitance. So, it is mentioned as CM when the crystal is not vibrating, okay, so it will be uh, acting as a capacitor. So, it is CP, it is mentioned as CP, parallel capacitance or mounting capacitance. Uh, sometimes it also uh, denoted as C dash, okay. So, when it is vibrating, three, uh, there are internal fr frictional losses which are donated, uh, which are denoted by a resistance R which are denoted by the resistance are when the crystal is vibrating. So, resistance R. While the mass of the crystal, which is going to be in, uh, which is indication of its inertia and it is represented by the letter L. It will be acting as an inductor. Then in vibrating condition, it is having some stiffness. Okay. So, when the, uh, when the crystal is vibrating, it will be having some stiffness action, which is represented by the uh, uh, represented by a capacitor C, yes or simply C. So, the mounting capacitance which is nothing but the shunt capacitance when the crystal is not vibrating and these three are the components because uh, whenever the crystal is vibrating. Okay. So, yeah. So, piezoelectric crystals such as quartz which exhibits electromechanical resonance characteristics that are very stable with the time as well as with the temperature and highly selective means having a very high Q factors. So, this is a circuit symbol and this is an equivalent circuit and a third circuit which shows the graph that is graph of uh, reactance versus the frequency. So, that will let us discuss later. So, here uh, quartz crystal uh, one of the number of the crystal type which exhibits, as I told, exhibits the property piezoelectric uh, effect. Uh, similarly, a voltage applied across one set of the phases of the crystal causes a mechanical distortion in the crystal shape. When alternating voltage is applied to the crystal, mechanical vibrations are set up. These vibrations having a natural resonating frequency depending on the crystal. So, although the crystal has a mecha electromechanical resonance, we can represent crystal action by an equivalent uh, electrical resonance circuit as shown in the figure, previous figure. So, the resonant property are characterized by a large inductance L as high as hundreds of Henry's and a very small series capacitance C is or C uh, such as uh, as small as uh, 0 0.0005 picofarad. Series resonant R representing a Q factor omega naught L by R. Uh, uh, that can be as high as few hundred thousand and a parallel capacitance CP or CM, shunt capacitance or mounting capacitance, uh, which is of a few picofarads. So, capacitor CP represents the electrostatic capacitance between the two parallel plates of the crystal when the crystal is not vibrating. So, note that your uh, parallel capacitance or the mounting capacitance, it will be very much greater than, very, very much greater than it is series capacitance CS. Okay. So, now I told uh, there will be two resonant uh, frequencies. One is because of the, because the crystal is vibrating and the other one is because of the non-vibrating, uh, whenever the crystal is not vibrating. So, the crystal as represented by the equivalent circuit uh, shown in the figure uh, uh, previously can have two resonant frequencies. One resonant condition occurs when the uh, reactances of the series RLC leg are equal 
or else it is opposite. For this condition, the series resonant impedance is very low and it will be equals to R. So at that time, your um, frequency of resonant frequency will be Fs is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi root Lc. Okay. The next condition is the next resonant condition occurs at a higher frequency when the reactance of the series resonant leg equals the reactance of the capacitance capacitor CP. Okay, CP. So this is a parallel resonance or anti-resonance condition we call. So under the parallel resonance, the equivalent capacitance will be CM, which is nothing but the mounting capacitance or parallel capacitance CP. CP into C, C or CS divided by CM plus C. Okay, hence the parallel resonating frequency will be given by FP. P stands for parallel resonating frequency. Formula you need to remember 1 divided by 2 pi root of L into C equivalent where C equivalent you need to calculate before substituting that is CM into C divided by CM plus C. CM is a mounting or the parallel capacitance. C is the series capacitance. At this frequency, what happens? The crystal offers very high impedance to the external circuit. So, in order to use a crystal properly, it must be connected to a circuit so that it's low impedance in series resonant operating mode or high impedance in the anti-resonant operating mode is selected. So, we observe that crystal reactance is inductive over the very narrow frequency band between omega s and omega p that is what shown in the figure so this is because of the inductive nature and this is because of the capacitive nature so you observe that crystal reactance is inductive over a very narrow frequency between the omega s and omega p between omega s and omega p the curve is very narrow it is okay so for a given crystal this frequency band is well defined thus we may uh, we may use the crystal to replace the inductor of the corpus oscillator so similar to corpus oscillator corpus we are going to make use of two capacitance and one index inductance connected in parallel to these two capacitances in series so instead of inductor we are making use of crystal over here only that is the difference so the resulting circuit will oscillate at the frequency frequency of the crystal um, which is equivalent to cs and cp plus c1 c2 divided by c1 plus c2 that is nothing but this one only they have really written like this okay cs is uh, very much smoller than the three other capacitances uh, so the omega naught will be equals to 1 divided by root of l into cs which is equals to omega s yes. So next comes the one of the crystal oscillator which is called a Peirce crystal oscillator. So this is uh, similar to your Colpitt's uh, oscillator. So in the feedback circuit, Colpitt's we are making use of two capacitances which is connected in uh, parallel with the one inductor. That inductor is replaced by the crystal over here. Okay. Rest all it is same common emitter amplifier it is. The Colpitt's oscillator can be modified by using crystal to behave as an inductor here. The circuit is called Peirce crystal oscillator. The crystal behaves as an inductor for a frequency uh, slightly higher than the series resonant frequency Fs. The two capacitors C1 and C2 required in the tank circuit along with the inductor are used as they are used in the Colpitt's oscillator circuit as only inductor gets replaced by the crystal which uh, behaves as an inductor. The basic uh, working principle of the Peirce crystal oscillator is same as that of the Colpitt's oscillator only. So the practical transistorized Peirce crystal oscillator which is shown in this figure. So the resistance is R1, R2, RT which provides a DC bias condition for the common emitter configuration of the transistor. So then RFC which is used as a radio frequency choke which provides isolation between the AC and DC operation as we have discussed in the Colpitt's oscillator. Next, CC1 and CC2 will be acting as a coupling capacitor and CE will be acting as a uh, emitter by, uh, bypass capacitor. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, the next one is, again, uh, this is using the FET. 
using the FET Pierce crystal oscillator. So the resulting circuit frequency is set by the uh, series resonant frequency of the crystal. Change in the supply voltages, temperature, transistor parameters have no effect on the circuit operating conditions and hence good frequency stability is obtained. So the oscillator can be again modified by making use of the internal capacitors of the transistor used instead of C1 and C2. Okay, CC1 and CC2. Instead of that, uh, we are going to make you uh, replace that with the uh, single capacitor. Okay, so the separate capacitor not required in such circuits. Such uh, circuits making use of FET and transistor as shown in the figure. So this is called series resonant uh, crystal uh, oscillator. In a sense, the crystal will be connected in series with this uh, coupling capacitor. Okay, so this is using the transistor and this is using the FET. You can note down the difference here. Using the transistor, we require uh, for the biasing two uh, different uh, resistors that is being used over here. Whereas in the FET, only one uh, resistor that uh, RG and uh, and this will be one of the end, one end of the RG will be connected to the ground and the other end uh, it is gate, it is connected to the gate and it, as well as it is connected to the crystal and CC1. So this will be acting as a feedback between the drain and the gate and here also it will be acting as a feedback uh, circuit between the uh, output terminal which is that uh, collector and the base of the BGT. Next is a parallel resonant uh, that is a series one. This is a parallel one. So at the output side this will be crystal will be connected in a shunt manner. Okay. One end will be connected to the output terminal and the other will be grounded. So the crystal impedance is maximum in the parallel resonant condition. So it is connected in shunt. So Colpis oscillator can be modified as a crystal oscillator same as that of your crystal oscillator uh, sorry Colpis oscillator only. So crystal appears as an inductance of the largest value at parallel resonant frequency. R1 and R2 are the biasing resistors. At parallel resonant condition, the maximum voltage is available across the output. So this is coupled to the emitter using the potential divider formed by the capacitor C1 and C2. So that completes the uh, crystal oscillator. Again, one more oscillator is there. That is called Miller, Miller crystal oscillator. That is not uh, given in your uh, syllabus. Uh, so that completes the crystal oscillator. Next, we can see the uh, difference between the LC and the crystal oscillator. So here in the LC oscillator, we are going to make use of separate L and uh, C components which are necessary in the tuned circuit. Whereas in the crystal oscillator, single crystal serves as the purpose of the tuned circuit. And uh, LC uh, oscillator, the Q value is less as compared to crystal. Uh, whereas crystal oscillator Q value will be higher than LC tuned circuit. And here um, in the case of LC oscillator, the frequency stability is less. So crystal oscillator particularly used for the very high frequency stability. And uh, in case of LC oscillator, the bandwidth is more. Crystal oscillator, the bandwidth will be, of course, it will be very much less small bandwidth. And the effect of temperature on frequency is more severe in case of LC. The effect of temperature on frequency is negligible in case of a crystal oscillator. The frequency range which can be generated is more. The LC uh, crystal is uh, which is very limited to the frequency generated uh, due to the thickness of the crystal. So next, the last difference is it is used in the general purpose applications like signal generators, whereas crystal, it will be used in wherever we require high frequency stability applications like uh, in the uh, watches, computers, TV, transmitters, receivers, there and not, we are going to make use of uh, this crystal oscillator. Next, let us discuss the um, two problems, very important problems. You can expect these problems in the exam as well. So a crystal which has uh, to solve the problems, what you need to know is one is the series resonant frequency and the parallel resonant frequency. Okay. 
So the crystal has L value 0.4 Henry and C value as 0.085 picofarad and CM or uh, CP parallel uh, shunt capacitance mounting capacitance which is equals to 1 picofarad and R is equals to 5 kilo ohm. Find the series resonant frequency, parallel resonant frequency and by what percent does the parallel resonant frequency exceed the series? Uh, just you are going to calculate the percentage increase. Next is uh, find the Q factor of the crystal. Okay, so we know the formula 0 resonant frequency 1 divided by 2 pi root LC. Just substitute L and C value and obtain FS uh, series resonant frequency. You will be getting the value as 863.138 kilohertz. And um, to calculate the parallel resonant frequency, you need to calculate the equivalent capacitance. Equivalent capacitance is given by the formula C into CM or CP divided by C plus CP. So C value is given, CM also given. Substitute the values, you will be obtaining C equivalent as 0 0.0783 picofarad. And uh, from that, uh, you can easily calculate the parallel resonant frequency. The formula is 1 divided by 2 pi root L into C equivalent. Substitute the values, you will be obtaining FP as parallel resonant frequency as 899.074 kilohertz. You see the difference here. This is 863 and this is 899, very much less uh, uh, range of frequency. Okay, so the percentage increase in the frequency you can, uh, how can calculate this? FP minus FS divided by FS, that into 100. So only this is the percentage increase, that is 4.163 percentage increase in the frequency. Next, last one is find the Q factor. Uh, you, you need to remember this formula. Q factor is omega S into L divided by R. Omega S is nothing but 2 pi FS because we don't know what is omega S. Uh, we can write omega in terms of f, so it is 2 pi f into L divided by R, substitute fs and L value, R value, you will be obtaining Q factor as Q doesn't have any unit, it is a constant one, so Q factor is 433.86. Very important problem, so the one more problem similar to this, a crystal has a mounting capacitance 10 picofarad that is CP, shunt capacitance or parallel capacitance. CP or CM is equal to 10 picofarad and the inductance equivalent of mass is 1 milli Henry that is L value and frictional resistance small, small r or capital letter R which is equal to 1 kilo ohm compliance with the 1 picofarad that is a series capacitance value find the series parallel resonant frequency. FS you know the formula, FP you know the formula. To calculate FP C equivalent is required you know the formula C into CM divided by C plus CM. Substitute all this value, you will be obtaining FS 5.033 megahertz and FP as 5.2785 megahertz. Okay, so that completes the crystal oscillator as well as explanation as well as the problems we have discussed today. So the recommended questions from this oscillator, crystal oscillator and the LC tuned oscillator is they have uh, the, these two questions. It is it was asked in the uh, model question paper. The first one is um, explain the working of the crystal oscillator. Whatever the working I had uh, explained, you can uh, give a brief explanation on this and then explain the series and the parallel resonance action with their equivalent uh, circuit that also I had given and the relevant expression that is FS and FP you need to write down and if still has problem along with that problem is given to calculate the series and the parallel resonance. I hope you can uh, uh, you can refer the previous problems and you, could, uh, you can solve this uh, problem as well. So, explain the working of the Colpix oscillator. So, these are the recommended questions which was asked in the uh, model question paper. Thank you.